John. I'm going to be careful here because a lot of people hear words like precognition and telepathy and immediately put up their barrier and go, they couldn't possibly be. I think pretty much the whole history of science is about having those people who put up the barriers and say that can't possibly be. Those yes. folks eventually go, wow, I see how that works now. <laughs> so, so it's just right at the moment, you can't find a lot of serious research into things like dream precognition. And yet there are thousands of cases in literature the problem with all of them and the problem with all of the kind of quote paranormal things happening in dreaming is that we can't get any external verification of any of it so most scientists just back away going i can't deal with this it's stuff that's going on inside your head how do i know you actually had that dream and so they kind of throw up their hands and walk away from it to me, that's like the big opening. Everybody else is walking away because this is hard. I'm here. I want to understand this stuff. <laughs> All right? I want to understand yeah. the stuff that nobody – you know, you're not going to give me tenure because I'm interested in stuff that's outside of the normal. Fine. Bye. Right. Neither, yeah. Right? I really <laughs> exactly. want to find out how this works and whether it can be organized or managed. Um, hmm. As far as precognition goes, there are a lot of people in modern physics who would say that our universe is just one of many, and we don't know how it's – coming out it's not predetermined and there are all these possibilities so maybe in that alone we get images of things in the future that that come true in some sort of way one of the things i have observed because i've had many precognitive dreams which are kind of scary because i'm knowing about something before it happens is that the dreams have to work with the the images that are available to you now I can't see the future as it is. I can only see the future in terms of the things around me now that have some future sense. Uh -huh. So, so as it could be almost. As it could be. Also, it's as though here's a person. You haven't met this person yet. And you're going, you will meet them later. And when you meet them, these things are going to happen. But you don't dream about that person's face because you need a face that you have now. You don't dream okay. about faces you haven't seen. So that was just one of my observations along the way about precognition, that it was uh, more metaphorical and more uh, a picture image of a future state rather mm -hmm. than it's not like crystal clear. It's more like this is what might happen. And your dreaming mind deals with it that way. So I'm not sure there's any magic flying through time here so much as your dreaming mind being very fluid about inventing possible futures. That's what your dreaming mind does best is to cogitate, create stuff that doesn't exist. And in the course of doing that, some of that's going to be true. That makes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. My, I, I've not had, to my knowledge, a precognitive dream that's been fantastically, as a matter of fact, I can, I can sum up my, the one precognitive dream that I know really well, I was the night for a game, I dreamt in the morning what would happen before each game, you would uh, weigh yourself in the morning. And my weight does not fluctuate very much at all uh, with all the sports that we play. It's just, it, it stays at this. Well, I, for some reason, dreamt the exact number down to the, we had these little numbers. It was like, you know, 72.64. You can see it. Yeah. So for whatever reason, my brain figured out what it was going to be, and that's what it was. That's and the that's one precognitive dream. Yeah. Okay. And but it's also something that mattered to you, and it's something that you you could project immediately into the future that this event would occur in the future, and now you pegged a number that is exactly what you saw. Is that is that your brain just being fluid about coming up with numbers, or did you actually see the number in the future and bring it back to the dream? I, I leave the question open. I don't science says I have an answer to this one. Okay. Well, then that was going to be my place for you to, you to speculate because every, every, since that you've done all of this, I don't know if you do speculate on, on what's going on with the dreamscape. Is there this possibility that we don't – do we have something untapped? Did, did, did human evolution take a left turn somewhere and we just kind of – because we ignore the dream. Is there just a massive ability left that we're not touching? That's my question. Mm. Oh, th this is a, one of my favorite topics, and it's one that doesn't have a quick, simple answer. So give me a second here. Part of what's going on is that our dreaming mind, what we experience in the present as our dreaming state, I think is what our ancestors had as their main way of thinking. Oh, I think wow. if you go back 
far enough. You have to go back. You have to go earlier than mm, clocks. You have to go back before we name time. You have to go back to a world. Think of what the people who were living on the savannas are in the caves. What was their thinking like? Did they think rationally like us? They certainly didn't have our vocabulary. Mm -hmm. They didn't have our well-developed languages. So what was their thinking like? And I, I expect it's a thought experiment, but I think that the that this is our most primitive mind. This is our earliest form of consciousness. And basically what our conscious, rational, linguistic mind, the one that we use every day here to carry on conversations, that one has kind of beaten up on the primitive old dream. Th you're stuck in night. We're <laughs> chucking you into night. That's where you're yeah. going to be. We'll let the old fashioned thinking go on there. Is that old-fashioned thinking capable of doing something we might call telepathy? Is it capable of exchanging information between dreaming minds? I wrote a dissertation on that, and the quick answer is not much. Not to uh -huh. say it doesn't happen, but if you step back and look at it, the occasions when this occurs are few and far between, and they also seem to be not very efficient.